so on the sweet will of our Gurudev, we are going on to find quotes from Chaitanya Charitamrita in different scriptures here. We are searching in Shishirada Rasa Sudhanidhi and we came up to verse number 43. Here we are. And I will just read the verse so that we can get some idea what is the topic. First the topic, then the quote, like always. Will I ever become eager to take Brishabhanu's daughter, who is shy and afraid of her new meeting with the king of the Bauchis, by her lotus-like hand to bring her to the play bed in the trysting bower, which is made of soft, fresh sprouts. The beginnings of love. So this is the topic. And the maidservant, like always, tries to help her Swamini in that affair, in that moment. In this way, the maidservant carefully brings Swamini to the love bed made of fresh blossoms for the first union. How sweetly the divine couple experiences the first union. How much effort the Sakis have done to arrange for this first meeting of the Supreme Brahman and the Supreme Love. The maidservant blazes Srimati's hand into Shyam Sundara's hand and brings the Morris couple to the love bed. Madhava eagerly looks at Rai's face and blazes her on his lap. Rai is carefully and shyly looking at him and she becomes startled when he first touches her breasts. She turns her head away when Krishna wants to kiss her and then Krishna tightly embraces her and drinks the nectar of her lips, kisses her. Only the loving devotees can understand this. The word Vitendra means king of paramours. The word Indra or King is used here to indicate that only Krishna can rightly be a Paramur, nobody else. Because this gives him the greatest loving pleasure. Now comes the quote. 
Brachavina ihara anyatra nahivasa. This kind of relationship with God cannot be had anywhere else but in Braj. So lucky you are that you are in Braj now. <laughs> and this is the most precious gem we got from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I mean, just imagine what a gift. Tulsi is giving the hand into the hand of Shyam Sundra, Radharani's hand in the hand of Shyam Sundara, pacifying her. Arrange everything for the first union. What a seva! It's not just some seva. I mean, there are millions and millions of people who pray for some seva for God. This is Unat Uchvalaras. It was never given before. We may think, yes, well, we, we may take it for granted because all the time, whole week sharing some of this. But actually what we share here is the highest possible spiritual topics. The highest possible spiritual topics, not just some spiritual topics. This kind of relationship with God cannot be had anywhere but in Braj. No other place, not outside of Braj, it's possible. If you want to have association with Baikuntanat, <laughs> well, You can have, you go, will want to go to Tvaraka, you want to have relation with Tvaraka now, you can have, but this kind of relation is only possible in Braj and this Seva is only possible in Braj and only by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is what we are searching for here. We want to understand what kind of mercy Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving us, is offering us. It's up to us to take it. It's up to us to take the mercy of Gurudev and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which means in the end, the mercy of Radha, the mercy of Radharani. So it's up to us. We can take it or we can leave it. But there's nothing sweeter than that. There's nothing more precious than that. And if you want to talk from higher, there's nothing higher than that. So it all comes 
to the madness Radha's rendezvous. Radharani is maddened by the thoughts how, in which way, she can serve her beloved. This Mohan, she wants to serve her Mohan. In which way? And here she is serving in a extraordinary and very completely maddened way. And the kinkery is her shadow. So lucky we are, always with her. So this was the quote from verse number 43. Actually, just to get a red line, this leads actually to Radhika's Brahma Vaichitya. She's so mad and she's so in ecstasy, and they come together in ecstasy. And in the end, it leads to the situation that she is sitting on the lap of her beloved and crying out loud. Oh, Mohan, where are you? Even while she's sitting right on his lap. And this is so interesting because this is the mood Chaitanya Mahaprabhu brought with him. This is the ecstasy. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, wherever he is looking, he will spread that ecstasy. That's why all the creatures will dance. Moving, uneven, non-moving, they will at least chant. We will think it's an echo, but no. It's the chanting of the non-moving beings. This is the influence of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, isn't it? I can speak for myself. I'm also such a non-moving living entity before I met the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> At least on the emotional platform, I was non-movable. <laughs> Maybe still some little part is there today, but it gets better. <laughs> Due to the influence of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is moving our heart and he is moving, moving everything. Why? Because this is the love and the mercy of Radha combined. We have to see, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the combined form of the highest ecstasy of loving exchange between Radharani and Krishna. And in the same time, the highest possible mercy for all jivas included. The highest comes to the lowest. Kali Yuga, who is here now in this material world, he missed some chances. <laughs> so now, the highest mercy we can get.
and we hear about this Virahini Sri Radha because this is also the mood which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually is celebrating. Because we have to get this mood. Viraha means we are separated, but not just we are separated. We are actually suffering transcendentally under that separation. And this is actually needed. Otherwise, if we don't miss someone we love, then something is wrong. We cannot get back because there is no wish to come back, isn't it? You don't miss someone, you don't want to go there, so, okay. So first we have to come in this mood. So let's hear about Virahini Shridata and get some drops. Verse number 49 of Radharasa Sudanini. Oh, may that Radha who passes the seemingly endless day in great difficulty, feeling separation from the crown jewel of gallants, crying showers of tears, singing of his emotional love play and taking her sweet sounding veena named Madhumati in her hand. May that Radha appear in my heart. In the commentary, Srila Anandadas Babaji writes, This is the only way that the beautiful girls of Braj can pass the seemingly endless day without dying. In the Pramara Gita, the song of the bumblebee, Srimad Bhagavatam, 10, 47, 12, 2, 21. Sri Rata says, Tat alam asita sakyaya tushyachas tat katartaha. It's useless to be friends with a dark complexioned boy. But at the same time, it is difficult to give up speaking about him. She doesn't want to pronounce the name Shyam or Krishna. But instead, she says, Asita, someone who is not fair complexioned. Nevertheless, she tells the attendant bumblebee or, in other words, I can give up everything, even your friend Krishna, but I cannot give up the treasure of speaking about him. It's only by speaking about him that we gopis can somehow survive. If we speak 
stopped speaking about him, we would immediately be burned to ashes by the fire of separation from him. Sri Rata's Vina is called Matumati, a girl who intox intoxicates the heart with honey. A girl who intoxicates the heart with honey. That's the Vina of Rana. Srimati is completely absorbed in singing about Rasa Raja's emotional pastimes with an ever so sweet voice. When Sriman Mahaprabhu was at Puri in Radharani's mood, his strong feelings of separation could only be pacified by singing about the emotional pastimes of Krishna. So here's the connection. And here comes the quote, the first quote. There will be a second also. Dine Prabhu Nana Sange Hoi Anyamana Ratri Kale Bhate Prabhura Vihara Vedana Ramanandera Krishna Kota Swarupera Gana Viraha Vedanaya Prabhura Rakaye Parana Chaitanya Charitamrita Antya Lila 6 in the daytime, the Lord could find some distraction in the company of different people. But at night, the pain of his separation increased. Ramananda Roy somehow saved the Lord's life by speaking about Krishna to him. And Swarup Damoda sang songs. In this way, the Lord could tolerate the pain of separation. Swamini cries to her maidservant, Alas! Where is Krishna, that ocean of qualities, now? Without him, my whole world is empty and the day seems to be endless. No worldly feelings of separation can compare to the gopis' ecstatic feelings of separation from Krishna. Anya ye dukkha mune, anya taha nahi jane. Whatever is on someone's mind, another person cannot know. Anya jana ka heliki nahi jane pranasaki yate ko he dhaya dhari bhare. Chaitanya Chart Amrita Matya Lila 2. Even my pranasakis don't know how to pacify me, what to speak of others. So here we have a wonderful 
tremendous example. What Raha means? What is this separation in love, in transcendental love? This is pure madness. And we know that Srila Prabhupada Nanda, Srila Raghunathas, they were also mad like that. Srila Raghunathas was pumping his head on the ground in Radhakund, rolling in the dust, crying, bathing in his own tears. So if we don't miss someone, how we want to get there? If we don't at least have a drop or a drop of the drop, some part of the drop of a drop of these feelings, how we want to get back. So we need to jump into that emotions together with these great souls who are already inside of these emotions, like Gurudev, like Srila Raghunath Goswami, like Srila Prabhupada Saraswati, and others. We need that so that these feelings can come. Because if they don't come, if we don't miss them, then <laughs> we will stay there where we miss something. If we miss a car or something else, <laughs> yeah, then no problem, you can get. But we want to miss our Swamini like that. We don't want to miss Krishna like that. We want to miss the Seva of Radharani like that. So if you go in the kitchen and you cook, then be aware. You help Radharani to cook for her beloved. You can ask her, how can I help? What could I cut for you? And pray in this moment, oh, when will the day come that you are standing directly here, me on your side, helping you? Yeah, it's not so easy, but we can try again and again to do our seva very conscious, get in this connection. And miss that seva, that direct seva. Because Ananda is only there where rasa is exchanged. And if you want to have the highest ananda, you need the highest rasa. And if you are not interested in ananda, then you have the best sight. Radharani is not serving because she wants Ananda.
So let us at least pray that these thoughts will come in our mind, that these emotions will grow by the time. We cannot press emotions, but we can wish that these emotions will come. And by the mercy of a person who is always in Ananda, Nitya Ananda, by the mercy of this person and his left and right arms and feet and parts and parcels, by that mercy this feeling can slowly pop up in the heart. But we have to, first of all, have the wish. Otherwise, what will come in your life if you have no wish for it? Only trouble. So you are, of course, like always invited to share your feelings on that points. When you hear that points, you may share with us. It makes the whole thing more precious. Virahini Sridhartha. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in that mood. So may we get even the smallest fragment of that feeling also in our heart. to give some food for that wish. We will hear about the dancing of Sri Rata's sidelong glances. When one day the day comes that she is giving one of these glances to you, to me, then it's for sure that we will be in this eternal seva. So it's nice to meditate on this sidelong glances of Radharani. This is the next topic in verse number 51 of Shashira Rasa Sudhanidhi. And of course there is one quote, yes, one quote of Chaitanya Charit Amrita. So first the topic, we start in the explanation of Srila Nandadas Babaji. One may ask here, the sweet glances may be able to infuse Brahma Rasa in the devotee's heart, but what is the meaning of the saying 
that they also shower the whole world with Brahmaras. Again, one may ask here, the sweet glances of Radharani may be able to infuse Brahmaras in the devotees' hearts. But what is the meaning of the saying that they also shower the whole world with Brahmaras? In his Uchwala Nilamani, Srila Rupa Goswami has mentioned the Anubhav of Sri Radha's Mohanakya uh, Bhav called Brahmananda Kshoba Karitva. You have heard right, it's not Madanakya, it's Mohanakya. Because Madanakya is when they are together. Mohanakya is the ecstasy in Viraha, when they are not together. The highest ecstasy of Mahabhav. It's called Brahmantakshopa Karitva. It's agitating the whole world and has exemplified it by saying Purnanande Bhusitva Bahi Idam Abhishartam Asit Ajandam The Vapur or Sri Rata Sprema wanders in all directions and gives great agony to the living entities, even if they live there in full bliss. Purna anande pititat prema chate ananda svabhav katvat Sri Jiva Goswami. It's not such an easy topic to understand. But actually the feeling of Radharani is going everywhere, it spreads everywhere and it's agitating everyone. Everyone. From the words full bliss we can understand that the entire universe is filled with prema. It's astonishing, isn't it? The entire universe is filled with Prema. From the words full bliss, we can understand that the entire universe is filled with Prema. From this, it is easily understood that the sweet glances of Sri Rata inundate the whole universe with Brahma. Did we get this? One sidelong glance, wherever it falls, inundates everything with Brahma. These are Radha's sidelong glances. Oh my God, please let them fall on me at least one little, one day. Then it's done. Then we can serve in Brahma. 
then we can serve her lotus feet and again and again get the sidelong glances of our Swamini. So what does it mean? The sidelong glance is falling on the universe. So it's filled with Brahma. This does not mean that everyone becomes liberated. Because in the universe, where Sri Radha performs her manifest pastimes, all living entities may be immersed in Brahma. When these pastimes become unmanifest, innumerable, subtle, dormant living entities from other universes will be generated there along with their fruitive activities. So it will be filled up again. The universe emptied because all the living entities who were there with the Radharani fully in Mahabhav, in Brahma, when they go back in the spiritual realm, all the subtle living entities, souls without bodies, will again come there and fill it up. So that's why it's not empty. Otherwise you would say, why this universe is full of souls? <laughs> Radharani was here, isn't it? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was here. They should be gone. They are gone. But it's filled up again. Because they are endless jivas. Endless, subtle, living entities full of fishes. Certainly, in this age of Kali, the time has come to inundate the whole world with the truth about these matters. Sriman Mahaprabhu has accepted Sri Radha's mood and complexion and has inundated the whole world with the sweet rasa of her loving glances. Now comes the quote. Uta lila prema bonya choti ke bedoi Stri vrita bhalak yuva sabhari duvai Sajana durjana panku yoda andagana Prema bonyaya du bailo chakatera chana Chaitanya Charit Amrita Adi Lila. This flood of love expanded and inundated all the four directions, drowning every one woman, old folks, children, and youngsters. Good people, bad people, the lame, the dull, and the blind. All the people of the world drowned in this flood of love. Jai Jai Sri Radhe. Nitai Gaura Hari Bol. This is what happened. All the people of the world drowned in this flood of 
लो Just remember, this is only possible by the mercy of Radharani. Krishna alone is not, not, not able to do it. Only by accepting Radharani's mood and her complexion. Only, only then he is fully, completely, with all energies he needs. Viraha in the highest form, Mohanakya Bhav in the highest form, and Madanakya Mahabhav in the highest form in one person. This is full power of Mahabhav. Full. Not missing an inch. Complete. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's amazing, astonishing. It was never there before. And the whole universe completely flooded. Isn't that mercy? So what do you think? Are they taking care of us? Is Radharani taking care of us? I think if we get aware how much that we already swim in Brahma, then we will be ashamed at that moment that we asked for something. But we don't have to be ashamed because asking for something means also relationship. <laughs> this is just the base on which our rasa will be. The mercy of Radharani towards us, it's already indescribable, but this is only the base of our seva. So you cannot find any words to describe the mercy and to describe the ecstatic emotions we are presented by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Undescribable. That's why he is Maha Prabhu. The master of the master of the master, the highest master. And who is the master of the highest master? Who subdues Krishna? Our Swamini. These are the sidelong glances of Swamini 
and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And because it is so sweet, we will hear another sentence of this verse. Seeing the appearance of Radhika's adolescence, seeing the appearance, it just appears, of Radhika's adolescence, it's just appearing. Vishaka chokingly told her, Oh, Sundari, your glances are like bees that start to fall from your eyes, that are like blue Indivara lotuses. Your heart is like a young swan that begins to search for the lotus stems of bashfulness. And the honey-like luster of choking words begins to shine from your lotus-like mouth. So this is a description of Radhika's adolescence. Isn't that wonderful? Did you ever saw bees when they are in a swarm, complete, and they fall out? It's described here like that. Her eyes are like Indivara lotus flowers and many bees at once fall out of them. These are the glances, her glances. And then usually the bees fly in all directions. They fall out and fly in all directions. The bees who fall out of the Indivara lotuses. So wonderful description of the glances we are talking about or we were talking about. But this is just a speck of dust of Radharani's glories. Sri Rata has divine qualities so many that we cannot count them. But We just were this, these days, we had these 25 qualities of Radha, isn't it? In the book Temple of Love. She's sweetness personified. She's a fresh young girl. Her eyes are always moving. She's always brightly smiling and so on. So we know there are endless qualities. And Gurudev gave us the hint. Try to see it in the connection with your manjari form. What does it mean for you in your meditation? Swamini's qualities like her sweetness Let's take an example. 
she's so endlessly sweet that Krishna tries to get every drop of the honey which drops from her lips in form of a smile. So he's kissing her, try to catch that honey drop. Don't let it fall down. But although he's very good in his endeavor, he is not perfect. Because honey drops are coming from the lotus feet of Radha, dropping to us, to the jivas. And now we are reading about this one small drop which reached us. So this Sorry, honey drops, Guravani, Yeah. It's better to ask now about what you read till now because maybe we'll, uh, so that you can freely go further. I don't know. Can you hear me? Ah, you want to ask about this, what we read till here? Yes. 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 Please ask. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. If if I understand, sometimes uh, devotees uh, speaking about these themes of uh, missing somebody, they say it, it's not, it, it can be compared uh, in uh, missing somebody, in, uh, lover or anybody in this world or friend, I don't know, mother, father, with missing of Radha. Some of devotees don't have so much accent speaking about transcendental missing. And as I see, if uh, Prema is already here in creation, that causes us to, to miss somebody strongly, to love somebody. So exactly, therefore, we may, like in this body, we, we know something already about transcendental missing, right? Unconscious in the Unconscious. soul. In the soul, it's always there, yes. Nitya Sita Krishna Prem, like this verse, it's actually saying that it is always there, but it has to be, you know, under the garbage hill of material wishes and thinkings, it has to be found again and fired up again. So let's say like that. Yes, okay. But it's and there I, in the soul. Uh-huh. Yes, more or less in some situations. <laughs> I, I always find so pure, uh, I don't know, things co connected with, uh, as you say, some insects, flowers, and the sun rising, dusk and down. I mean, there are perfect moments without garbage. <laughs> Even garbage may come in another five minutes. <laughs> it's sun, yeah, it's her, her precious. But also one, one question about uh, different bhavas. If I understand through few sharings before also, uh, uh, different bhavas connected in one, the same kirtan or exchange between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and uh, his uh, devotees, Ramananda Roy. That's what appeared first time that devotees of different bhavas may feel each other so connected. Uh, or and you want to know why? Uh, oh, what is what is the question you want? To uh, know the question why? is: Am I am I am, am I on the right path thinking like uh -huh. that? Yes, of course. And it's very, very logic if you see it with the eyes of love. Radharani has all kind of moods in her. All kinds. She can help every devotee in, in the specific path. So she is actually the Adi Guru, the first Guru. She can help everyone in the specific bath. So every baths are in her. That's why only in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because the mood 
of Radharani is there, all the bhavs are included. Yes. Okay. And that's why it looks so harmonic, although they are different bhavs, but now it seems that they come together. Yes, especially is this, I don't know, maybe sort of Hindu tradition that has strong classification between these and that and this and that. So it's very seenable, yes. And sorry, just one little question about gopis that can stop talking about Krishna. So this uh, no, uh, wouldn't also um, character of uh, manjaris and kinkaris, they, they don't have such need, right? Talk about missing of Krishna. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> they only miss Swamini. Radha, yes. If Radharani is missing Krishna and they could serve her by getting him, then maybe they miss him in this moment for her. Okay. For her Swamini, for the Seva. Uh -huh. But not for themselves, never. Yes, just this moment. Okay. Thanks. Why they should miss Krishna? Because actually, if you are together with Krishna Mai, which means Krishna is always inside, and wherever she looks, wherever she is, it's outside and inside is Krishna. Why you could possibly miss him? I don't know, because we also have here Radha Mohan, and as you say, Mohan is form of missing. <laughs> If you are together with Radharani, you are always, always connected in the best way and you serve in the best way possible to this Mohan or Krishna or Govinda or whatever. Because this is only possible with Radharani because Radharani has all these feelings inside, everything. Festival of feelings. Okay. Yeah, thank you for this question. Yeah. Rade? Yes. Uh, Rade, Rade. So, Rade. <laughs> what does it mean when Guru Dev says uh, Gopi Bao and Manjari Bao? That for Gopi Bao you don't need Swarupa. Manjari Bao you need Swarupa. So. Yes, because if you if you are actually serving God, that means you are in Aishvarya. Aishvarya means you want to stay in your sadak because you want to serve in your sadaka. That means your body here. You pray and serve from that body. But if you want to go to Radharani Seva, you need you definitely need the body of a young, precious girl looking like Radharani, wearing her maha dress, wearing her whole uh, maha, like flower garlands and uh, other things, looking like Radharani, but a little bit younger and you serve Radharani as Manjari. You cannot go there in a man's body. And that means man's body doesn't mean like me, I'm looking like a man now, you're looking like a woman now. It doesn't mean that. Man's body means you want to enjoy. But actually, the only enjoyer is Krishna. We are Prakriti, we are the enjoyed. So we are never man, but here we try to be. This is the play garden, the kindergarten, playing room, where we try to be like Krishna. But if you want to have something from Krishna, you can pray to Krishna in that body. You can say, hey, Papa, I'm like you. Give me, give me, give me this, give me that, let me play. No problem. Because you want to be like him. But then it's God consciousness. No rasa. If you want to go in a rasa, 
then you need a spiritual body and this is only handed by Radharani. So only Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could give us this, this precious gift only because it's Radharani's mood, it's Radharani's love, it's her Mahabhav and it's full, it's complete, not missing an inch, it's complete. And she can give you everything. You want to be the mother of Krishna? No problem. You want to be a friend of Krishna? No problem. You want to be a Das? No problem. You want to be a Gopi? No problem. Radharani can give you everything. Spirit, mm -hmm. body, Sita Deha, in your mood. And this is what we talked about before. Only because Radharani is there in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this is possible. Otherwise not. In God consciousness, you don't need a Sita Deha. Was this understandable or mm -hmm. it's okay? Much clearer, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much for this question. It's a very precious question. Actually, everything which is coming from you is, is really precious. So please don't mind. Whenever you have some feelings, some questions or whatever, just interrupt. We have time. We can go on slowly, you know. We have really time and we should actually be very personal in that things. That's my opinion. We should be very personal. Otherwise, we cannot grow fast. Just because I I don't know, can I ask or not? It's precious that you ask because it helps you and it helps others also who maybe have the same question. And so please do it. We don't have to run and we should understand on the platform of feelings it should be there. We could, you know, when you ask, you want to feel it, isn't it? You don't just want to understand something theoretically. You want to have a feeling to it, some connection. And when you get this feeling to it, some connection, then you are satisfied, isn't it? Before, it's just Kyan. So we need to get these feelings to go further, because then it's clear. Now I have a feeling to it. Yes, now it's clear. Like Gurudev is giving us feelings, usually he's not very much in theoretical answers, isn't it? He's giving very clear emotional statements that immediately, if you have some experience in this way, you immediately understand what he wants to say. And this is so precious because I met personally so many people who are talking and talking and talking and they have millions of verses and whatever books and you know, Ooh, after such a glass, you just think, oh my God, I am so stupid. But when you come from sharing from Gurudev, then you always have a feeling you catch something, you have something new, isn't it? You got some point. Because it's very practical. Gurudev is very practical. <laughs> I would have yes. a I'm a bit sick, so sorry if I'm, yeah. But, no, 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 sorry, please. You are um, So when you, so I was told that when you get this farup, the way you realize it is through your imagination, right? So you imagine, um, you imagine this farup, but at the same time, my imagination is completely material, right? So how do you how do you get over that like how do you um 
how do you, how do you get from the material to the spiritual imagination that's one blockage i have and the other one is um like good everyone said to me krishna is not indian and um this let's let's just say i don't have a natural affinity to the indian culture like it's all i just don't know it that well and it's it doesn't feel very close to me so when you say what you know because i've also been wondering what do the mandaris look like what do i mean yeah i know the color of the dress but what does it look like and and what do they look like anyway do they look indian like i i just i i found it really hard to i don't know how to do it you know like what am i supposed to look imagine them like indian looking people or do you know what i mean i'm i'm just really mm -hmm. stuck in. i hope i understand but um let's see first point was again so that the others also again can snap in was the first the, question the material and spiritual imagination good about this material and the spiritual imagination so actually we are asked to meditate conscious about we are manjari and we serve radha and there are descriptions how we should meditate on that it's basically written down by uh, rupa goswami and other goswamis everything is written down so but now come to the point what we are practicing a day the mind is actually showing us pictures we know how he could show pictures we don't know so we are used to some pictures so but no problem if you imagine the most beautiful girl you ever saw the most beautiful girl you ever saw so sweet that you could not get your eyes from that this is your imagination of radharani let's say like this you start what will happen if you have children and they are playing in a room now they try to play yes i am mama and i will cook now see what my cake is isn't that like mama's cake huh it starts like that what will happen if you again and again play the same game mama will come and say maybe i will show you how you can really bake this cake you want oh yes mama i want <laughs> yes can you show me yes i will show you come come with me in the kitchen so we may start in a game but it ends up in the in the true world so in our case here the material world is just a game you cannot you cannot die you are soul you are eternal you cannot die you are actually not really suffering it's an imagination now it feels like that yes of course but actually you are soul you are such it ananda you forgot because you are now in the game and you're just playing something and you're completely in your role so the practice is to get out of this role again come back in the real world the real world is where mama is baking in the kitchen the cake i can smell it already mm, it tastes so nice i want to go back so i imagine i imagine it's a start by reading the description how we should do that it's actually really helping but you have to read i cannot just say this in a few words now but everything is described nicely so if you're interested there are plenty description of all this sadhana bhakti 
how to do it, how to meditate, in which time what you meditate. Everything is nicely described. So you practice like this. You start with your pictures. No problem. The pictures will change by the time because Radharani will respond on your meditation. And then your pictures will slowly change in the right direction and it will be more vivid. It will be alive. And then the day will come spontaneous. And then you will see the truth. Because then it is not your endeavor anymore which brings up this. It comes by itself from the transcendental realm and is showing itself to you. This is like I look. This is what you are serving me. It's like that. You like it? Oh, oh my God, yes, I like it very much. It's much better than I could imagine. And this will happen by the time. First, we have to show our endeavor. We want that. It was not just some idea which is gone in five minutes. No, we want that. We have no other goal anymore. Forget about all my ideas here in the material world to get happy. Forget about this. Now I understood it's, it's, it's stupid to try that. Now I understood where I will be happy. I want to go back home. And home is home. And you will smell it, the home. You will see it. You will hear it. You will, by all senses, it will be very clear to you. Yes, that's my home, isn't it? When you're coming home, you know that you're home. You will feel it. I never saw my father till I was 18. I saw him the first time and we said, you know, we will meet somewhere, but I don't know. I don't know how you look like, you know. Maybe I will take a news letter from the day. I came from Mannheim. He came from somewhere else. Because this newsletter is not existing in our realm, I will immediately see it's you. Honestly, we didn't use it. When he came in, it was completely clear, yes. Before I was really thinking, maybe, maybe this guy, maybe that guy, maybe, you know. In the moment he came inside, it was clear, yes. No doubt. So when you come home, when you see your mother, you are connected with Radharani always, you know, always, eternally, you will immediately, immediately, you will say, yes, that's home, that's home. You will feel it, your heart will burst out of feelings, no question anymore. But till that time, no problem, imagine, try Try your best. Because what children, helpless children can do, just trying their best. I'm stupid, I'm helpless. But I'm, I want. I want. Help me. And do I imagine them like Indian girls? No, because it's not Indian. We think it's Indian because this tradition, this original spiritual tradition, which is always there, it's the base of the today Indian tradition. But it's not the same. It doesn't have to do anything with India. It doesn't have to do anything with anything here. 
The Vedic culture is not actually dependent on India and, and it was not just in India. It was actually the whole world was actually in former times, a long time ago. It was completely um, ruled by that, by that Vedic laws, actually, by one king. We can read that also in Bhagavatam. So actually, it's it's not India. It's not you know anything traditional. It doesn't has to do anything with it. That's why Krishna is saying uh, in Bhagavad Gita, give up all these traditions and uh, social forms of humankind. You know, like Sarvadharma Pratya. Give up all religious and all these social concepts. All these these man made concepts. Give them up. It, not, it has nothing to do with that. It's completely spiritual. It's completely pure. And it's actually the most beautiful thing you can imagine. It's much more beautiful than you can ever imagine in this world. Because these clothes are not just, you know, sari, you look in sari, yes, very nice sari is there, but they are not the saris from the spiritual sky. You can have these stones like gems, you know, different kind of gems. You can have a very nice, uh, how you say, a necklace, necklace. This is nothing in comparison with these spiritual stones. They have light from inside themselves. They don't need light. They are shining from inside. They are much more beautiful than you can ever imagine. This cloth, this is not like here, you know. It's even if you take the most uh, soft cloth. It's hard in comparison. This cloth there is a feeling. It's like some, some breeze is touching you, a feeling is touching you. Sometimes we sit there and we get goosebumps, isn't it? When we feel very nice, relaxed and some feeling is coming. Sometimes it feels like goosebumps are coming on their own, like a cover, like some cloth. Just imagine, it's just, it, it's not the truth I'm talking about. It's just going in this direction. It's just a hint. But you will not ever in the whole life on this planet imagine how wonderful Radharani is. Even her clothes, even her necklace, every part, one hair. It's so wonderful, so beautiful, you will never get it. You cannot understand it. Because it's made of Mahabhav. So don't mind. Your mind is telling you something anyway. So what? You know, it's okay. Start with that and let's see where it goes to. You know, but bring you further in emotions. Thank you. Thank you. I think this is also a very wonderful question. So, Sri Radha's divine qualities are undescribable. So, and because we had a very nice question about Bhajan, 
We may end with this also here, with bhajan. It's about bhajan in Braj. Also, one question was asked so many times. You know, it is said, we have to live in Braj and then meditate. But what does it mean to live in Braj? Braj is also made of Mahabhav. It's not like a table, it doesn't have anything to do with matter. Braj means you are in the feeling realm of Radharani. She is everywhere. Because of Ananga Mandri. She expanded herself to be with us everywhere. So do together bhajan with Radha in Braj means I'm asking, oh Radhe, please, I can do nothing. Please be with me, help me to do bhajan. I can ask my Gurudev, please, Guru Manjari, are with me, help me in my bhajan. We can call them, they are there. It's not imagination. It's the truth. The others are crazy who are not doing this. Not the ones who are doing it. That why, that's why this prayer from Srila Prabhupada Saraswati is starting with the words, May my mind always dwell in Radha's tender lotus feet. May my mind always dwell in Radha's tender lotus feet. It's about bhajan. This is from the bodily platform. Otherwise, we would not talk about the mind. Because this is actually our biggest problem, or <laughs> actually the only problem is the mind. <laughs> so may my mind always dwell in Radha's tender lotus feet as I loudly and very affectionately sing Hari's name to her. So why I chant Krishna's names? For Swamini. This is a very high platform of bhajan. I don't chant Krishna Krishna for me. I want to be, no. Krishna, Krishna. I will bring you to Swamini. Hare Rama. Then you will be together and I will be with you and serve you. I will sing Hari's name to her. Serve her with many perfumed paraphernalia and most blissfully follow her in Vrindavan. Most blissfully, I will follow her in Vrindavan. 
Bajan in branch. So what is very important about Bajan in our case is that actually we are doing it with feelings. So how I can get feelings if I sit down and chant my rounds? Oh, I have to chant today such and such rounds and I have to chant all these mantras, these other mantras, diksha mantras and this and that. Can I get ever can I ever ever get a taste for that actually if I do like this? Or can I get a taste if I ask I'm helpless, I got this from my Gurudev. I try to do please Guru Manjari, please Radharani, be with me, help me, give me the feelings, please let me go deeper. It's just a little prayer. And for sure it will help you to change your bhajan completely. Do it with feelings. My recipe, which you shouldn't copy, but I honestly tell you, better less, but in emotional quality, than more without emotion. I said this once in ISKCON and I was banned immediately. But actually, what is the worth, what, what is your bhajan worth it, if it's not leading you to emotional connection? This is the goal. So try your best doesn't mean that every day is perfect. No. Most of the days, <laughs> oh, oh my God, worse or worse. But anyway, I try. I try and I cry. And I cry and try. And in this way, emotions will gift it to me. Gifted. They will be gifted by the one who has all emotions. The all emotional Mahabhav in person will hand it down. True. The parampara. It will come to you. If you want, no pressure. We can see that Rupa Goswami was not seeing the holy name just as syllables. He actually saw a form. So if I chant Radha's name, Radha, and have no connection, no feeling, nothing, it's just two syllables, then it's good. Go on. But better is when something by chanting this name is coming to you, some feeling you didn't have before. Maybe by the time you will even see something, maybe some nicely decorated lotus feet, some bells, whatever, it will come. 
but be open. If we wish and we are open, everything will be granted to us. Otherwise, it would be a lie that Radharani is the most lovely and personally Karunamai she can never forget anyone of us never we can forget her but she will never ever forget any soul be assured the holy name can be chanted in two ways ordinarily or with affection the ordinary offenseless chanter will reach the divine abode of the Lord but the affectionate chanter attains the proximity that's a difference the proximity of the Lord and thereby his personal service In our case, the personal service of Sri Radha. When Sri Krishna came to Kurukshetra, he told the gopis, O Bracha Sundaris, devotion to me bestows immortality to the living beings, and your affection for me has forcibly attracted me to you and brought me here. So that's the difference. You may come to God in some way, but if you love him, he will come to you. Love is attracting. Even for Krishna, that's why he is attracted only by Radharani's love. He is moved completely because she has complete love. Here it is said loud chanting is the best. We have to understand that this is on the platform of. Um, sadaka in Mandri Bhav you try to chant actually inside and this is not loud that's another platform those who chant loudly do not only benefit themselves but also all other living entities So now comes the quote of Chaitanya Charamata. Nama Vikraha Swarup Tina Ekarupa Tina Beta Nai Tina Chit Ananda Rupa. The name, the deity, and the constitution of God are all one. There is no difference between them. They are all transcendental. And that means if we come to the platform, hopefully, please pray for me that I will come to the platform one day. If we come to the platform, 
that we chant deeply, attentively the holy name of Radha, we will know in what conditions she is now, what she feels right now, where she is, how she looks, everything. She will reveal herself through her name because she's not different from her name. We think there's a difference. But if we feel one day that there's no difference, then it will come up to that point. Nama Vikraha Swarup Tina Eka Rupa Tina Vedanai Tina Chit Ananda Rupa Eine Form und auch die uh, one form and also the form of Ananda. So it's everything one. It's not different. Chaitanya Charit Amrita Madhya Lila 5. And there are so many brilliant examples in history of how the deity directly ate the food offered to him by the devotees. How he spoke with the devotees or went to different places with them just to please them. For the sake of his devotee, Lord Gopal walked from Vrindavan to Vidyanagara in South India. And out of love for his great devotee, King Purushottama of Orissa, he came from Vidyanagara to Kataka. This is impossible. Usually a deity doesn't move. But love makes him move. Who is love? Radharani. Radharani is moving him. So if we get the mercy of Radha, we can easily move this Krishna from here to there. Bring him by the hand. Come on, where you were? to Swamini. She is missing you so much. When the Queen saw Sri Gopal, she became desirous to blaze a valuable pearl in his nose and thought, if there was a hole in the Lord's nose, this maidservant could have hung a pearl in it. Thinking like this, the queen offered her obeisances to the deity and returned to her palace. But at the end of the night, Gopal appeared to her in a dream and told her, When I was a child, my mother Yashoda made a hole in my nose and carefully hung a pearl in it. That same hole is still in my nose. Put the pearl you wanted to offer in there. So we can see the deity is talking with the devotee. And he's telling, you wanted to give me your precious pearl. I have a little hole in the nose. You can put it there. That's personal, because of love. Without love, impossible. Without Radharani, 
without the mercy of Mahabhav, not possible. Finally, Sripad expresses the desire to live in Vrindavan. It is most blissful to consciously live in Braj. To consciously live in Braj. Here it's written, it is most blissful to consciously live in Braj. Thinking. I am living in Sri Radha's playground. I am living in Sri Radha's playground. I, the Kinkari. I am living there. I anyway imagine my form. What's the problem? I imagine I am there with Radharani in her home, in her kitchen, where she is cooking for her beloved. I am with her, washing her feet, preparing her for meeting her beloved. I means my citadea. I am a small girl looking like her, almost like her. Just younger. But I look very similar. Depends on your form. Sometimes you even have the same skin color like her. You have her Maha dress. You smell like her. You look like her. Younger in age, smaller, small copy. The sweetness of her is with you. The mercy of her is with you. All her qualities are with you. No wonder that Krishna is attracted. But not with us. We will not even take a Mahagaland directly from him. Only if Radharani has accepted it before and giving us. That's something else. So, meditate on that. But to start to meditate on that, we need help. And this is actually the mercy of Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi of Srila Prabhupada Saraswati. This is the mercy of these books. It's giving us a very, very found foundation for meditation. It's giving us the I was gone for some seconds here. Mm. So it's giving us the best, the best foundation for our meditation. So that's why we read these books, we share on these books, and we are going deep inside, so that our heart will one day catch the feelings and let it grow it starts with the mind and then it goes in the heart. But if we start to drink with the ears, then it goes directly in the heart. If we just try to understand, it will stay in the mind. Yes, now I got it. I know this verse. But did you understand it, feel it? Understanding means feeling, have some feeling for it. That's the difference be between Kyan, Kyan, and Vigyan. So, 
we can end here for today. Thank you very much for your precious questions and that you are here and we can share that, we can share on these topics. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon again. Rade, rade, thank you. Jai Shri Radhe. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you, Gaur Gauravani. And thank you all for your wonderful questions. <laughs> you inspire Gauravani to talk more. <laughs> You're always in increasing my feelings, my dear. You are blessed. <laughs> This is actually what we are for here, to increase our feelings. You're increasing my feelings. I'm so lucky if this is going in the other way also. So this is actually what we should do. Help us to go more into that feelings, dive in. Because we want to feel our home. Yes. First imagine, but then feel. Thank you. Thank you all. Rade, rade.